Welcome to the Burning Hearts Ministries. We envision all men and all nations burning for Jesus, living victoriously in their eternal ordinations. As you listen to this sermon, we are certain that you will be equipped for the work of God. You're in for a great time in the Word of God, so put of distractions. Be blessed as you listen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so I'm so happy and excited at you know how well um, my brother Jeff was able to recall the core aspects of the teaching. All right, you know, in every teaching like this, you need to discern what is the goal of the sermon. All right, what what's what what exactly is the preacher trying to achieve? What exactly is the um, objective of such a message and it's, it, you know it's, it's several things right but the two main things is to see the superiority of man and not just man but how that God has favored man especially or particularly the man in Christ over every other created thing hallelujah I'm just going to run through the notes quickly just to give us an idea because I know on Sunday we had um, we had we had a little issue with the stream. Like this. We had a little issue with the stream, and so we had to, a, a lot of of the stream was cut off. All right, just like the scripture that my brother Jeffrey just read down, Psalms eight from verse three to verse four, particularly. His he um, um you know the psalmist speaking says, "When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained," he says, "What is man that you are mindful of him?" And the son of man that you visit him and if you check that word visit it's not just talking about oh i miss you let me come and pay you a visit because we're talking about the omnipresent god here all right and i mean yes there are spectacular moments in your life when um you have maybe a disclosure or a special encounter that is is as though that is as though the omnipresent god the ever and always and everywhere if i should say present god decided to concentrate on you as it were you know there's just that moment of ecstasy um just like how um jacob would say that the lord was in this place and i knew it not you know that kind of thing a concentrated if i should say um experience of the presence of god that's not what we're talking about here the word visit actually means to pay to pay special attention to to oversee to care for all right if you check what that word means that's that that's the literal meaning in the hebrew so what this guy is saying in psalms 8 verse 4 particularly or verse 3 and verse 4 he's saying what is so special about man <clears throat> excuse me what is that thing about man that makes you give preference to him above every other created thing and the phrase he used here is says when i consider the work of your hands it says the moon and the stars when I consider the work of your fingers, you see the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What then is man? You see, when we talk about the work of your fingers, on Sunday I established that you see the, the work of the fingers of God or the work of his hands, <coughs> excuse me, it spans above both, it spans um, both into the visible and the invisible. All right, there are things that God created that can be seen in the visible realm, there are also things that God created that are in the invisible realm. I mean, just like how Hebrews 13, Hebrews, um, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews 11, verse 3, I believe, says that by faith we know that the worlds were framed by the word of the word of God, and the things that be do not, and the things that be do not come from the things which do appear. All right, so there are things that appear, there are things that do not appear. The things that do not appear are the invisible aspects of the creation of God. He says, when I consider the work of your hands, the moon and the stars, you see, um, I, I, I introduced the concept of the intelligent design, which is one of the arguments that is pro, um, proposed in um, an, in an atheistic discourse or in the defense for the faith or of the faith one of the things that we look at when we're talking about um intelligent design for instance is the dna all right because a lot of atheists or um yeah or maybe even skeptics propound or people who are um anti-creationists if i should say the one of the one of the arguments is that you know they, they, they said they they profound they propound the theory of the they promote the theory of nothingness all right they like to say that nothing gave birth to something okay or that everything is just a result of you know random happenings as it were 
but if you study the dna of man you will find codes there codes there and these codes are intelligently are intelligently crafted to capture the very essence or basics of a human of a human being you know from the, the you know to the color of your hair your skin complexion all of these are encoded within the dna you see for that level of intelligence to exist there has to be an intelligent coder a programmer that means god was the first programmer <laughs> okay because obviously god created man when you look at the sun for instance still talking about the work of your of your of his hands when you look at the sun you see the sun is is so is so mysterious that it's unable to harbor life but it is because of the presence of the sun that life can exist in the earth <laughs> do you understand that plants need sunlight to achieve photosynthesis the process between, um, by which plants move from seed sprout and get into the seed and the fruit phase germination phase and all of that and you see if the if the sun ceases to exist if the sun ceases to exist everything that depends on sunlight will invariably cease to exist as well so all plants are going to die you know um i i i did, I did a, a study once and i found that if the sun should cease to supply its lights to the earth in about two weeks all life form would, would, would basically cease to exist in the earth every organism and animal that feeds on plants will die every human being which we definitely feed on plants especially vegetarians you know are going to see we're definitely going to going, going to cease to exist of course you might say okay yes there are other synthetic ways of survival but you see the basic thing there is that the sun has stopped supplying its energy it's not just light that light is energy that is captured in it all right um and, and all of that when you consider the milky way galaxy what it means when you talk about light years how that you can be seeing a sun from the earth and no know that that sun is is, is thousands of years away it will take you thousands of years to get to that sun you might be seeing the planets in a, in a little speck of light but what you're seeing is an entire oh my god an entire landscape or span of land that is maybe even four times bigger than the earth you are seeing another planet you are seeing you know there's there's just a lot to learn and to you know grasp in creation when we talk about the work of god's hands there's a lot there to talk about but now the psalmist is saying when i consider the work of your hands what is man that you are mindful of him and there are two things to learn from that number one in all of the beauty and magnificence of the created universe of the created world in all of its magnificence number one only man was made or created in the image of god number two in all of the beauty of the created universe the earth you know and even the, the milky way and all of that the sun the moon you know in all of their beauty magnificence and even the energy as it were that they provide or that they um you know pro produce and supply in all of that it is only man that god has chosen to dwell <laughs> to dwell in only man that god has chosen to dwell in hallelujah you see in the book of ezekiel 30, 37 and verse 27 it says my dwelling place shall be with them that's god speaking i said and i will be their god and they shall be my people isaiah 66 from verse 1 to verse 2 thus said the lord the heaven is my throne the earth is my footstool where is the house that you build unto me where is the place of my rest for all those things my hand have made it says and all those things and all those things have been said the lord but to this man will i look to this man will i look to this man will i look look at what jesus said in john 14 from verse 1 to verse 3 it said let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house there are many mansions all right in the book of john 14 in my father's house there are many mansions and that's just the statement of the graciousness of god is the statement of the all-encompassing grace of god uh, of god's intent you see in my father's house he was speaking about himself he is the father's house all right it says if you have seen me you have seen the father in john chapter 10 is that verse 30 i think that was the statement that even made them almost kill him right because they called him a blasphemous man he says i and the father we are one so if you have seen me you have seen the father he is the father's house all right and you see that that metaphor of house was fondly used to you know refer to man or refer to himself and also to, and also to man you see even the same jesus speaking and saying destroy this temple in three days i will raise it up and of obviously in hindsight and even from prophetic insight from reading the old testament you can tell that he was talking about himself because of course it was on the third day he came back to life uh, we see that in romans 8 he was raised 
back to life by the glory of the father by the spirit of god all right so he says in my father's house there are many mansions that means through me <laughs> hallelujah there are so many other mansions all right through me being the dwelling place because he and the father are one on the account of his sacrifice on the cross he was going to be charting the path to bring bible says or, or we, we can summarize that statement in hebrews 2 that the son of god became the son of man he says bringing many sons unto glory bringing many sons unto glory that the sons of men might become the sons of god hallelujah amen so that's one of the first things that i try to show us that okay even at the base level first when we're talking about made for more even at the base level as a man you are already favored because even the dominion mandate was given unto mankind man was created in the image of god both the believer and the unbeliever <laughs> was created in god's image amen it is man not just the man in christ that was created in the image of god and then you now see how that because from man's of course when man fell he lost certain privileges and i told you all that satan does not like this and that's why one of the things he loves to achieve when he possesses a person or when um he of course he, if a devil possesses a person is satan possessing the person as well all right when the person is possessed by a devil is that he he loves to dehumanize such a person he wants to achieve dehumanization and we see this in the book of mark chapter 9 from verse 14 it says he is possessed this 14 to verse 18 i'm just going to read, read randomly because of time um the guys the guy that saw the lord jesus and then he spoke to the lord saying teacher i brought my son so you could heal him he's possessed by an evil spirit that will not let him talk it says and whenever this spirit seizes him it throws him violently to the ground then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid and becomes rigid there are so many other scriptures to show you what devils do to human beings when they get the opportunity because men we have what satan can never have just men looking at you he hates you just the very mere fact <laughs> that you are more priced you are a much more prized possession to the lord than any other created being visible and invisible for the mere fact that you were created in the image of god it's it drives him crazy that's why you must never give satan half a chance if he has half an opportunity man he will afflict you to the oh my god he would make sure that there is no grain left unturned all right but the bible said that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy it says walk in the spirit you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh so even when he tries to come through a desire we know that by walking in the spirit of god that means by obeying the promptings the leadership and the scriptures that were inspired by the spirit of god we are putting to death the desires of the flesh hallelujah and so we'll give satan no place amen we spoke about limiting beliefs i'm going to run through this in the next four minutes we spoke about um, limiting beliefs which are one of the major which is one of the major reason why people don't walk in this reality because you see when god wants to change a man he, ch he changes his mind of course the first thing that god does is to is to give life to your spirit so when god wants to change a believer he needs to orchestrate a mind shift the bible speaking in romans 12 from verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind listen if the bible if the holy ghost speaking through the through the apostle paul is suggesting the need or pardon me is um is is preferring the need for transformation it means that there is an aspect of the work of god that is ongoing yes there is an aspect of god's work that is complete the holy ghost comes and makes you his dwelling place your spirit man is saved amen that's where the life is that's why that's why you receive god's life all right the life of god is is is, is given to your spirit your spirit man comes alive when the bible says you who were once dead in trespasses and sins he has quickened with christ jesus you see that in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 from verse 1 pardon me and then also verse 4 says um but god who is rich in mercy and all that says we who are once dead he has quickened us together with christ by grace we are saved and all of that all right so then then the bible is now saying that you should not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that's an ongoing work it's a it's an ongoing work it's just like how the bible speaking in the book of titus 2 and verse 11 says that the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly and all of that in this present world you know looking for the glorious appearing of our lord and savior jesus christ Christ. amen so limiting beliefs the wrong mindsets and this is one of the things that god seeks to achieve in and with his people before he can even go ahead to achieve or to do much more with them until god can has and can change your mind there's not so much that the lord can do with you we look at the case of jeremiah the lord told him oh before you were born i already had a plan for your life you see that's one of the scriptures that we go to to prove that the lord has and had the lord has a plan for every man before that man is born 
all right the when we talk about ordination when we talk about um, um you know the callings and all of that those those that reality exists now on an eternal plane because it came from god a timeless being you were not born and then god now look at your face and say okay um what can we do the way this guy is looking like he's going to be chubby so let's give him this occupation and all of that no a calling was infused into you before you were born all right it's an eternal reality just like jeremiah before you were born i ordained you and before you came out you know i separated you unto myself to be a prophet to the nations to do this and that and then jeremiah said oh lord he says ah lord i cannot speak before i'm just a child i'm just a youth and what did the lord say do not say you are just a child do not say you know i was speaking with my friend prophet joel about this same scripture and immediately i got to this part in our discourse while i was sharing with him he reminded me of the same thing same thing that god asked adam in the garden he said adam where are you you know and that that should teach you a lot about marriage because it was the man and the woman that fell but when god came he was asking for the man but that's a story for another he didn't say eve where are you <laughs> he said adam where are you because i don't want to go into that now you get my point already all right the lord says adam where are you and then says i hid myself because i was naked see what the lord asked him who told you you were naked so yes it is good it is true that god wants to achieve um salvation for you or in your life it is true that god wants to achieve regeneration in your spirit but god is also concerned about what instructs your sense of purpose what instructs your sense of being what instructs your sense of possibilities what instructs your perception of your reality the lord says who told you that you were naked who told you who told you you were naked who told you you were naked unfortunately the lord could not tell him don't say you are naked because he had already eaten the tree and he had fallen all right so the, his own case was much 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 more serious than jeremiah's own jeremiah's own and encounter was going to solve it and encounter solved his own but you see god had to become flesh and die to undo what adam did in the garden but you see it's the same issue mindset it says don't say you're just a child for you so actually for whatever for whatever, whoever i send you to you shall speak my words to them for i've put my words in your mouth hallelujah same thing with gideon and um, you see the, the angel appeared unto gideon in Judges chapter 6 from verse 12 we see that up, up until verse 15 and even down 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 and downward and all of that and the angel came and says oh gideon thou mighty man of valor and told him how how he was going to defeat the midianites and deliver israel from the hands of the midianites and gideon was like ah lord he says my clan um my clan is the weakest yeah he says so he said unto him oh lord how can i save israel indeed my clan is the weakest in manasseh and i am the least of my father's house limiting beliefs he had grown up f not feeling enough all right not thinking he could achieve anything for god and that was so important to god that god had to deal with that mindset first before he could send him on a, on, a, on a divine assignment and you see that not a lot changed just his mind he just simply was now able to believe that god could use him and you see i think i'm even going to stop here because of time that is one issue with many of us we don't believe god can use us <laughs> and i really thank god for stories like that of gideon i really thank god for stories like that of jeremiah I really thank God for stories of that of people like Moses, who was a stammerer, all right, who his speech impediment seemed like it was going to be a major issue in in fulfilling the, the assignment of God for his life. Look at the kind of people. If you had seen Gideon, I promise you, you will not rate him. If you see him on the road, you will just think he's one of all these random guys. Maybe you know nothing to nothing much happening with him. You know, he was like every. He was, in fact, he was. I won't say he was like every other person. He seemed to have been on the lower class if i should say according to social status but those are the kind of people that the lord loves to use the lord loves to turn nothing into something the bible says that he has used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise all right and one of the things the major things that god tries to do or that god does the major things that god does when or before he uses a man is to change your mind how does god do it by his word how should we achieve mind shift as well by the same word so the lord will tell him don't say the lord was speaking because you know i taught on on the, on the doctrine of god's of the word of god a while back we're going to go in depth into it next month and i'll teach you much more again we see that when we, when we talk about the word of god or the doctrine of god's word there are four or how be it even five major expressions we see god's word as god's verbal or spoken address like in genesis 3 it was the lord who was speaking to the man 
all right asking him adam where are you that was the word of god we also see in jeremiah chapter chapter one and from verse um verse um, seven or thereabouts when the lord told him i'll put my words in your mouth that means it is still god's word but now i'm putting it in your mouth that means god's words can also be communicated via human agency amen i hope you're still with me the word of god the words of god can also be communicated via human agency all right we also see again in, in the in the new testament the bible speaking in john chapter 1 and verse 14 it says and the word became flesh in fact from verse 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god verse 14 says the word became flesh and then in revelation as well we see jesus being referred to as the word of god all right you know so you we, we don't see that appellation used a lot of times in scripture but it was used and in fact it was used for the one that matters the most and i think one way we can also understand jesus as the word of god or the uh, you know god uh, the the not just the spoken or the written word as it were but more or less the revelation of god because in the in the speech in the speaking of god is the revelation of god in the book of hebrews for instance hebrews 1 it says god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoken to the fathers by the prophet has in these last days verse 2 spoken unto us by his son um, verse 2 says who being the bright who is the brightness of god's glory who being the brightness of god's glory and the express image of god's person all right so jesus is the word of god when you see jesus you have seen god it says if you have seen me you have seen the father and then finally we see the word of god as the written word so you know um, you see paul speaking in second timothy 3 verse 16 saying all scripture is given by the spirit of god by the inspiration of god pardon me and is profitable unto doctrine unto doctrine you see even peter speaking in his epistle saying that holy men speak as they were moved by the spirit of god that's talking about god putting his words in man and then we now we now see the written word as well you see so when we talk about the word of god we see it finding expression in those four format or four ways but what we have consistently and what we have at our disposal um due to the inspiration of god has you know moved upon men as it were all through scripture or that have that has moved men to live certain way or say certain words right is the written word of god consistently and you see god all through this all through the scripture re- frequently would refer men to the written word in Joshua 1 and verse 8 the Lord speaking says this book of the Lord should not depart out of thine mouth it says but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night and observe to do all that it says so God is recommending the written word of course the law all right and you see there is no part of scripture that contradicts itself so it is the written word of god so god is recommending his word you know and you see Jesus speaking in Revelation 2 verse 1 verse 8 verse 12 on and verse 18 or verse 11 and verse 18 jesus himself speaking to to the, um to the apostle the prophet john he will tell him write unto the church at ephesus write unto the church there write unto the church there he's recommending that his words be written that level of consistency all right or pardon me that level of um you see writing the words down will bring about will bring about consistency anyone that you just like habakkuk 2 and um, verse 2 that says write a vision make it plain that he may run that read it so anybody who reads the word all right has access to the mind of god revealed as revealed through scripture so i'm saying to you that even though it may it may be the case at the initial parts of your christian experience or walk that you might not hear an audible voice telling you i have ordained you to be a prophet or you might not hear an audible voice telling you you are a mighty man of valor or an angel may not appear to you and say oh thou um highly favored blessed and highly favored amongst men and all of that you might not have a spectacular encounter but you know god has not designed for us to live by the spectacular but by the supernatural what do i mean by that the supernatural is um, the word of god that we have access to the leading or the leadership of the spirit that is an overflow of the word of god hallelujah so you have the written word consistently feed your mind like dr joshua said yesterday says some of you use even just play an audio bible and just be listening to the word of god let it feed your mind let it let it dig a deep let it dig deep trenches in your heart let it dig deep wells in your heart let it stay so that it can begin to inform your your thinking it can infuse itself into your thinking into your mind do you understand what i'm saying so i'm saying that that is the major way that god achieves transformation and not just not, not transformation but now even mind shifts 
several of my disciples or maybe not even my disciples persons that I, that I know that maybe are struggling with with something and I, I don't even mean a habit some form of self-doubt you see when, when i really check these guys they don't study the word they just expect that a magic wand will be waved from heaven and suddenly their minds will shift no even philippians 4 and verse 8 says finally my brethren whatever things are pure whatever things are honest whatever things are of good report said if there be any virtue if there be any value it says think on these things that means there is a way to use your mind hallelujah even the man the one that the man that, that goes to the gym consistently knows that after maybe eight months one year two years there's going to be massive transformation in his body or her body yeah, all right you're not just going to wake you're not going to wake up one day and you see eight packs <laughs> you're not going to wake up one day and discover that your one pack has become eight <laughs> you're not going to wake up one morning and discover that your your biceps and your triceps have become you know massive and all of that you're not going to wake, wake up one day and discover that you have core strength in your core muscles no you have exposed yourself to routines over time and so you developed muscles look at what paul now says he says exercise thyself rather unto godliness it says for bodily exercise profited little but godliness is profitable unto all things having the promise of life which now is and of that which is to come that means while exercise is good the bible does not discourage exercise but it says prioritize the exercise of your spirit because that one has promises here now and even in the world that is to come hallelujah so there is the a you can exercise your spirit man you can exercise yourself unto godliness or rather exercise yourself in the things of god that means you can get better in the things of god you can get better in your teaching ministry you can get better in prayer the more you pray because you, you i mean the first time you try to the first time i try to do planks you know planks this thing that you rest with your your forearm on the floor and then only um your toes you saw your forearms up to your elbow and your toes are is what is suspending you I, first time i tried i couldn't sit i couldn't do that for 30 seconds <laughs> i was ashamed of myself but the more i did the more my my core muscles and my endurance began to increase i could now move to 40 seconds move to 50 move to one minute move to one minute 30 seconds you know planks is not an easy exercise but the more i gave myself to it the, the stronger my muscles became it is the same thing with your work with god some people wonder why they don't have a prayer life men is because you're not exercising yourself in that regard it's exercise because you will not always feel something you will not always feel a need or a nudge to pray hallelujah many times when i pray i don't but i've learned something that if my work with, with god if my work with god will make progress then i will need to call my feelings to catch up with my with the revelation of that i have in my spirit my my soul will need to catch up with my spirit it's not the other way around hallelujah because the fruit of my spirit is joy <laughs> so i rejoice with joy unspeakable full of glory whether i feel it or i don't feel it i don't function by my feelings and i need to remind myself and act accordingly as i do so you know my soul will catch up the bible says set your affection on things above not on things in the earth to set your affection is a deliberate act or activity amen this is just a, a, brief, a brief recap of what we've learned and i'm really grateful to um jeff for his um you know he being able to regurgitate what was taught and to highlight the core the core of the teaching which is number one god has favored man particularly the man in christ above all creation and number two um you know limiting beliefs are one of the uh, a major reason why we do not function in this reality sources of limiting belief number one our upbringing i explained that neuroplasticity the brain of a mind the, the mind of a child is highly plastic easily learns and unlearns while the mind of an adult sustains the attribute of neurocanality or carnality right if it's like carnality when you see a canal like a gutter you know how how steep it is how very defined you cannot easily bend a gutter has a very definite line of travel for whatever content flows through it that's how the mind of an adult is is more more has more neurocanality um, attributes than that of a child so when it says train up a child the way he should go when he's old he will not depart it is because when he is old it's hard for him to learn and unlearn at that point have you heard the phrase that says old habits die hard it's true it's true because whatever you've done for a while has a way of eating and embedding itself into your subconscious hallelujah second reason why um second source of limiting belief is um you know the information you expose yourself to as a man thinketh in his heart so is he and that is a hack that is a hack that many of us believers don't know that if you want if there is something that you yeah you are that you are um what's the word now if there is something that you are trying to stir up and a good habit all right 
specifically in your work with God, there's something like if there, if there is a positive spiritual habit you're trying to imbibe, expose yourself to the practice and the teaching of that thing long enough. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You, you become your life will tilt in the direction of your most predominant thoughts. Your life will tilt in the direction of your most predominant thoughts and speech. Hallelujah. So you have to fill fill your mind with the kind of things you want to become. If you are always watching movies that are erotic, you know the kind of person you are becoming. It may not appear to be so instantly. It's going to take it's going to take a while. Same way your muscles don't appear overnight. After nine months, <laughs> you will see, or maybe eight. I don't know why I said nine months, or maybe one year, you will see the muscles. Same thing. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly, or he that sows in, in he that sows into the flesh will reap corruption. All of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows into the spirit, spirit will reap life. All of the spirit reap life and peace. All right. If if you are struggling with prayer, just play. I have a ten-hour prayer charge on my YouTube channel. Just play it. Hear me pray. You would you will pray, <laughs> or any other prayer charge by anyone that stirs you up. All right, Apostle Arame has. Um, I, I think Apostle Irene should have. You know, any prayer charge that stirs you up. Of course, the scriptures being quoted are not misquoted. The aim is to charge your spirits to edify you. Give yourself. To, just be playing it. Sometimes, it, sometimes he plays in my house two four seven. <laughs> any day I'm struggling to study my Bible, I just play an audio. Yes, I still struggle with Bible study even now. I just play an audio, but I know that 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 struggle, that feeling is not real. So I play an audio Bible as it's playing. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'll just hear one thing. I'll pause it. I'll do one research. That research can take me two hours. For you know, I've studied two books. <laughs> Man, I tell you that this hack always works. It all, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The kind of information you expose yourself to goes a long way in determining the kind of man you become. All right. And then the third is the friends that you keep. The friends that you keep. The friends that you keep. He who walks with the wise shall be wise. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. You will be destroyed with that companion, with your companion. All right. If they are headed towards destruction and you are in the company, you already know where you are headed. You know, that's that phrase that says, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. It's true because humans are impressionable people. All right. We are all the products of the kind of books that we read, the kind of food that we eat, the kind of friends or company that we keep. And you see, one of your greatest influence are your relationships. Your relationships, the kind of friends you have. And this is a sign to someone. See, some of you need to break up. Because your work with God has been fine all this while. You are listening to me now. And you know it is you I'm talking to. Your work with God has been fine all this while. You've been on fire, burning fervently, even serving in church, having a very vibrant personal altar. You got into a relationship and suddenly you started kissing, started having sex, started touching yourself. And you know it is hard for you to stop. There is no accountability structure. You have tried everything. Listen, I'm, I bring the word of the, of the Lord to you, right? I bring you the word of the Lord. Break up that relationship. It's not of God. Can't you see that it's causing you more harm? Now, you no longer even pray. When you want to pray, the voice of accusation is so loud in your mind already. I'm not saying that there is no hope. There is hope. But the way to the hope is, is out of that relationship first. Get out. Get out. You are in the wrong company. And if you stay in that relationship, you will keep falling. Until the point that that thing will become a snare. You will not need deliverance. The devil will be attached to it. <laughs> oh, yes. Not every habit is just, is just muscle memory. Some habits are spiritual. You, you willfully engage in sin long enough until it became legal for a demon to now empower that habit. So when you say, I can't stop, you are never able to stop. You, are, you know you are the one I'm talking to you. You. That's looking at me now. Break up. Break up that relationship. And maybe it's not even a romantic relationship. The kind of friends that you keep. Let me ask you a question. If you meet with all your friends seven days a week, for 70% of your time with them, what kind of things you guys discuss? You discuss football. You discuss BB Niger. See, personally, I'm a disciplined man. But one major reason why I don't even watch BB Niger and all of that is because the friends that I keep, they don't. <laughs> they don't. I know I've, I've been shooting this BB Niger thing over and over again. Mm. Amen. The friends that I keep, they don't. All right. And it's not as if football itself is bad, but it's just not my thing. I can. I will probably flog you if we play FIFA game but you just won't see you it's so bad that when nigeria was playing world cup i i don't even know that they were playing that thing. and i felt such like such a such such a bad example of a patriot of my country so i had to just quickly google the result and all i mean is that's a personal thing let me not even give those kind of examples i'm talking about extreme things all right all right the, the, you see you you need to have friends that will stir you up. Bible says stir up one another unto good works friends that stir up your prayer life 
it's not the one that you tell that ah oh boy don't tell why I fast and they say ah oh more try fast too as they're talking they're ordering pizza and shawarma now that's not that's not the kind of friend you want to keep no that's not the kind of friend you want to keep <laughs> those are not the kind of friends you want to keep keep friends that when you meet they ask you Afa you don't study have you read this book man there's a book I'm reading by A.W. Toza it's called the um, you know um, there's this, this book I'm reading right now um, The Fellowship of Burning Ones by Toza man that book it was gotten for me by my very good friend Ebede Light powerful book you get friends out I'm more do you get this sermon where I don't see a way this, my, this, um, this man of God preacher I think you should listen they are sending you links I'll be all the links they are sending you out for the newest Chelsea boots or the newest suit in town or the newest dance step no now change your friends change your friends I believe God could use me and I believe that I could move in the prophetic and the power of God and even preach and teach because of my company because of the kind of friends that I keep alright because of the kind of friends that I keep so this is just a bit of a recap on what we learned last week Sunday um, please listen over and over and over again to this live live stream listen over and over and over again I want to just pray because I, when I began to end I began to see in a vision that there is somebody who is listening right now and you've been in a certain you've been in like circles and cycles oh thank you Holy Ghost Baraman treki vorola na treki na fara hasilom bara halatani mataya. Yeah, for the last eleven years you have been in circles and cycles. There is something that has repeated itself in your life over and over and over again. Something has repeated itself in your life over and over and over again. I bring you the word of the Lord. There is hope. All right, the wilderness shall become a fruitful field thank you jesus you shall not see wind or rain but the valley shall be filled with water thank you lord jesus there's someone listening to me now the lord is saying for i will be your light indeed i am your light so there is no more darkness or confusion even concerning that step that needs to be taken about travel the lord says i will be your light for indeed i am your light when it says i will be your light that means the light of the lord in your spirit will begin to shine and even shine upon that situation and cause you to know the right step to take hallelujah cause you to know the right moves to make because you are led of the spirit leading leading seeks you leading has found you out there is direction for you even right now in the name the mighty name of jesus even concerning that sibling that they seek the lord they had a, a, a younger sister the hand the hand of the lord is currently on that your sibling that they seek right now and i speak for healing oh yes right now it's flowing from the crown of her head it's, you know even the weakness she is experiencing in her hand in her hands the hand on the power of the lord is healing them right now <laughs> healing them right now i see a lady either here or represented here that there is a cloud of depression that has rested upon you for a while in the name of jesus that cloud is lifted a garment of praise as it were like a garment the oil of gladness a garment of joy is resting upon you where you are in the name of jesus i speak to everyone's sibling who is having an issue with admission right now it is resolved receive your admission now in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit thank you i don't know i'm just seeing people's families and the angels of the lord are, are, are doing are working are working are working in the families of people the angels of the lord they are working in the families of people right now i release the hand of the lord over your family i release the power of god over your families let all that needs to be corrected be corrected now in the name of jesus i see an issue concerning a farmland in the village or somewhere for a family there's a contention for a particular land and there's like a farmland around that land the lord is saying that that contention is resolved now in your favor in the next seven days you would hear a report i see seven days written by the angel of the lord in the next seven days you will hear and receive a report oh thank you jesus thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost things that have been buried to your detriment by the devil by the spells of the enemy oh right now the hand and the power of the lord delivers you you are free you are set free just like that yes it's that easy by the word of the lord you are delivered the lord sends me as his prophet to deliver his message unto you that you are set free from that bondage that has held you down all these years all this while in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you lord your system is healed and made whole oh yes of recent you are not able to eat or drink 
stuff like you could before but right now just give me a little volume on the keyboard as I, even as i round up right now the hand of the lord is resting upon you and upon your family upon your system as i was saying and there is healing for you right now oh thank you jesus Oh, I see. I see in the spirit. Vavanto, Vratabi, Valahatala, Vretoskevi, Verehelina, Karutem, Brikitala, Matali. I see a brother that your marital destiny has been withheld all this while. Right now, I break that spell i break that limitation that has held you bound held you down and i release you to get married by the power of the almighty god there is a contention for the soul of someone here because there was an initiation that took place on your behalf when you were born and now those spirits from that altar are beginning to demand are beginning to demand your soul they begin to demand your soul and that's why you have those dreams where you see yourself flying or you see yourself in darkness or see yourself in strange places right now by the earth by the authority of the lord jesus you are delivered the hand of the devil is broken the lawful captive you are delivered by the power of the lord for the lord indeed contends with them that contends with you in the name of jesus christ everyone who has experienced a brick wall in life that wall is broken make progress in the name of jesus make progress in the name of jesus the lord is putting his hand upon somebody listening and is increasing the prophetic grace that is at work upon you right now where you are the hand of the lord is resting upon you and i see like a ladder spanning from the earth to the heavens and the lord is saying that you are going to be coming into encounters this season fresh encounters fiery encounters by the word of the law of the lord it is activated now in the name of jesus Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Very mon da harati veli baba shakali borati mon treki lefana kwabina. Oh Jesus, I pray for you, Dolakbo. All that has been lost is restored in the name of Jesus. Restored, restored, restored in multiple folds. Veno kavira halati lepro tafi kreki trompa latina masaya. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't forget, like this video. If you've not subscribed, subscribe so you can get more updates. We share videos virtually every day on this channel. I have an amazing team of content creators that work with us on that. Thank you all for being you know, present, for showing up every, every day. All right. Um, subscribe. Click on the bell notification so you can be, you can be notified when I... Um, let me come again. I'm, I'm high. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Kambora la tife la protiki trakala. Vure man treki na mana frata bilia mata fraka pali ben troki de vele mahaski vavilo. Thank you, Jesus. I still see Kemino Sally. There's someone of recent you had a dream. In that dream, you were in a swimming pool and you woke up and you started to feel strange. It is a pointer to to a transaction that took place in the spirit realm on your behalf in the negative supernatural but if i be one that god has sent i speak forth right now and i demand your release in the name of jesus let those spirits take their hands off you now now this very instance now in the mighty name of jesus you are free you are delivered oh i see the bands of the wicked break I, I'm not I'm not just speaking what I want to see. I'm speaking what the Lord is showing me. The bands of the evil ones are breaking from over your life right now. Breaking from over your life right now. They are breaking from over your life right now. They are breaking. In fact, they are broken. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You will begin to experience ease over the next couple of days. It will start with a feeling of peace that's about to overwhelm you. It's going to overwhelm you from now to the next couple of days. A feeling of peace. It's, you know, strange peace will begin to flood your heart like a river. Strange peace will begin to flood your heart like a river. You will experience it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me come again. If, you, if this is your first time on this channel, you are welcome to Elvis Okifo's YouTube channel. Do ensure to subscribe and click on the bell notification so that you can be notified every time we drop a video. We drop a video every day or every two days. We have an amazing team of 
creators who are working consistently to keep you guys edified on this channel and do ensure you also share the link watch like videos leave comments on the videos share the link with people who you believe can also be blessed by what we do and what we're doing on this channel all right god bless you for being here and if you are about to watch a live stream or if you have just watched a live stream which you have just done now do ensure to spread the word and once the stream is uploaded leave a comment um, and i'll see you in the next in the next video god bless you